Hello, collector community. So today we're going to try out a new seller on eBay. I think this might just be a personal person, not a shop. Because looking at this box, uh, I don't think a shop would ever package something like this and send it out of their country. But if you're curious, this person is on eBay and the username is Sophie64Dogs. And uh, just look at this thing. I mean, it's nice to have the tape that says fragile. But, you know, that's not going to protect the fact that the box is rubbish. I think, this, <laughs> I think this box is like, it may have been reused. It's just not, you know, a strong cardboard. So, let's see. I, I, I'm thinking that things are going to be okay. Because these things come in crystal cases. They would have taken the majority of the abuse. So, yeah. Also, you have different colored, colored bubble wrap. There's a couple peanuts in there. Kind of a kind of an amateur uh, packing job, but I like to share this info because I don't want you guys to, you know. Well, if you guys are shopping around, you know, you know who to buy from, who not to buy from. So, you know, the uh, influence of two channels, uh, XLT Offroad Bear and Twice Diecast. You guys are uh, making me spend money showing off your cool uh, Biantes in the. Out of pure jealousy and the love of diecast vehicles, I had to get these. Uh, I also like learning about Australian cars. I've never been to Australia. Truthfully, it's not really high on my list of priorities to go to Australia, but uh, I do like the cars of Australia, and so we're going to just take a look at one of these today because I like to have separate videos for each of the models so you can search it out in the future. I think out of these, this might be one of the best ones. I've been looking at this thing for like six months and I finally caved in like a month ago and, and bought this thing. So what we're looking at here is the Falcon XW, which is an Australian made Ford. And it's a full size car. And this was a, available between 1969 and 1970, so only two years. This is the third iteration of the second generation uh, of Ford Falcon, I guess that's what the XW means. In the third iteration means there was a, a Ford Futura and a Ford Fairmont based on the XW chassis or platform, whatever you want to call it. I think the Fairmont is the luxury version of the, of the Falcon. A uh, bunch of engine choices, inline sixes starting at 3.1 liters and then maxing out to a V8 of 5.8 liters. So that must have been nice. And then there was a special version called the uh, GTHO, which I assume is um, Grand Touring High Output. Only 662 of those were made out of the, out of the 105,000 Falcons of the XWs that were made. Okay, so there's what we're talking about. Oh, interesting. 18 Australian dollars. Not sure, you know, how long ago this was. I don't see a date on, like, is there a date when this was made or sold? not seeing it, so that's too bad. Alright, there's a catalog here. I think I've seen this before in my other Beyond Face, so I'm going to just quickly show it to you guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not so important. Well, there, I mean, there's some cool cars there. I have a video on the, uh... No, oh, sorry. That's not that important to me, so it's and then just pass that on. Let's see, we got a crystal case and kind of it's not the tightest case, but it does it works. It works effectively. So there's a screw holding this. I'm starting to like this uh, little wow stick I got here. Okay. So it's our teeth to hold the car in place. Alright, let's uh, take a look here. So Alan Moffitt uh, raced this car back in 1969. I didn't actually research uh, the Bathurst race, but I guess it's a really popular race because I see a lot of these diecast cars revolving around the Bathurst race. And Alan Moffitt seems to be a pretty good race car driver. Uh, he's, I wouldn't be surprised if he won the race in this thing, but uh, I don't know for sure. If anyone knows, please leave a comment. 
So one thing that's a little bit different is the tires have a white stripe on them as well as the Goodyear printing. Well, the Goodyear is on there, but the photo doesn't have the white stripe. But it's possible that photo was not from the Bathurst race, so I think that would be logical. Maybe these are from a different race. It's just somewhere in the 1969 season, so it's fully understandable. Well, even the same race, he could have swapped tires, right? I don't know how long the Bathurst race runs for. If it's a if it's a few hours or if it's like an all-day affair, not sure. Sorry if anyone knows, please leave a comment. Okay, so I think it looked pretty similar to those photos, right? Let's see if there's any quality problems. I hope not, but uh, let's take a look. All right, so yeah, those tires, I mean, they're nice. This first, the shape of them, you know, this curvature, they're not slab-sided, so they look realistic. The Goodyear printing is fantastic. It's so clear. I don't know if I've seen a better tire printing than this. I mean, that's a really nice tire, right? <laughs> I never thought I'd say that in my life, but yeah, it's that's a nice tire. It's really strange to say these things sometimes. Okay, some tiny little recesses, but I don't think there's light passing through because I don't see anything on the other side. There's no light, but it seems to be black paint or something. I mean, it looks like there are air holes there. And then we got some lug nut details. So those are pretty good wheels too. Pretty cool. All right, so the graphics, uh, they're all tampo printed. I don't see any of that little clear wrinkliness of a decal. So this model, I'm pretty sure it's an old model. The box looked pretty old. Um, so it stood the test of time. If anyone knows how old, please leave a comment. It's always good to know that because uh, I'm afraid of paint rash, especially on a red car. Although this is more of an orange. Yeah, I would call this car orange, not red. I'm not sure what my camera's gonna show. Okay, so the front end here. We got some uh, plastic headlights here on the sides. But wait, they look like they're painted gray. Yeah, they're not clear plastic, but I'm looking at the photo back there and it's possible that these are like covers or something. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Obviously these are silver. And I don't know if those are covered as well. They look kind of yellowish on that photograph back there. You might want to rewind and compare again. So, not sure. Not sure of what's going on there. But it's uh, it looks like it's a separate piece. You know, you can see a little bit of a gap between the headlight and the chrome piece. So it's nice detail. Unfortunately, this is not a separate piece because clearly you can see the paint is running into the grill. Okay, well, let's see this badge here. GT Ford, yeah, all right, it's legible, looks good. This chrome bumper is really nice, look how shiny it is. Like, it's not pitted, it's, uh, boy, it's so, there we go. It's so shiny, look at the reflection. Look at my pick, I mean, that thing's like a real car bumper. Huh, awesome, awesome. I have two other Biantes. But they don't have chrome bumpers, they're like more modern. So uh, this is a new experience for me. This might be the best chrome bumper I've seen in this, this scale of vehicles. Yeah, it is. I've never seen a bumper actually reflect something so perfectly. Sweet. All right, we got a chin spoiler, black paint. I don't know if it's part of the base. It looks like it's a separate part. Possibly it's part of the casting. Although it looks like there's a break there. I guess it's not that not that important, but this looks like it might be a whole separate piece. Uh, yeah, it is, because you can see like a little crookedness there, right? The casting stops with this silver paint, and then that's a separate plastic piece. So I'm not sure if that's uh, just poorly... I think it's supposed to be more like that. Oh well. It's still pretty cool. I mean, look at this thing. This is a cool looking model. It's a cool looking car. I think I just like it because I've never seen one of these before. Look at this protruding gas cap here. Uh, nice detail. It looks like it might have some uh, dots around it or something. Hmm. Let's see if this is legible here. What's going on with this? Yeah, 351 a cubic inch. I think it's supposed to say Ford there. Not sure. But GT, something sponsorship there. Black stripe is looking pretty good goes all the way across. Alright, auto lights. What is that? Spark plugs? I don't know what the brake pads maybe. 
Sticking out uh, door handles made it silver, so those are nice. A little silver paint around the on the casting, but then the black on the plastic windows. So that's pretty good. Pretty uh, distorted windows, I think. You know, being molded. Let's try to focus on the. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, it's kind of blurry, right? All right. Let's see about the back. Wow, that's some nice printing, right? That's some legible Falcon 351 again GT. Seems like the tail lights are just uh, chrome plastic and they added some paint. So, yeah, red, orange, red. Hmm, I guess it's alright. It's just not a very bright red. It might be because this model's old. Maybe that thing's vaporized or something. Hmm. Okay, well, it's still pretty cool, I guess. And it looks like this is all a separate piece again, this chrome plastic. Okay. That's really nicely done too, this Ford. Really legible. Okay, so you got dual pipes coming out the back here. Unfortunately, they're just blanked off. No, no middle depth or anything like that. But you got some silver paint here for this. Uh, oh, this is nice. You know, a whole separate piece for these uh, pipes. And then uh, a little blue up here for like, the trans well, the engine block the sump. Ooh, interesting suspension going on there. I don't know what the heck. Well, whatever. Okay, so look at these treads. They're nice. I mean, they're they're detailed, but they're not super deep, so they don't look like off-road tires. A lot of brands are putting such thick knobbies on that from the side they look like they're going off-road, which is fine on a truck, but I see it on sports cars, and you know that's not right. It seems like this wants to roll. Mediocre. There's no Hot Wheels, but it's it, it works. This is a bit protruding, though. Right? That would have been nice if that wasn't sticking out so much. Look at look how far down it shows. Some design issues there. Okay, so the windshield wipers, a little silver paint, a little raised. It's a bit odd though that the arm doesn't connect all the way across. Right? It's just kind of floating, floating wiper blades. They're magical wiper blades alien powered. A little silver paint on that mirror, so that's a nice touch. Didn't expect it, but nice to see. In fact, that's a really nice mirror. Really thin arm on it, and then, you know, it looks right. It looks like something from this era. It's actually on the real car, too, so you might want to rewind again for those comparisons. So it's a nice little racing stripe. They're matte black. Some rib details there. Uh, some silver uh, hood pins, and then you got this little inlet here. Although, eh, the paint around it is not looking so hot. Or maybe it's not the paint. I, I have a feeling this might be a separate plastic piece glued onto the casting. Because I think I saw some other Beantes where that didn't have this bulge. So, that might just be like glue residue, not actually the paint itself. So, that, it's too bad. It's 61, and then there is a black D here. Just like over here. Maybe that's the class of racing group or something well I gotta say well all right a tiny bit of paint rash going on there but otherwise I mean it's pretty close it's close it's gotta be like a 90% perfect model 95 perhaps yeah, all right so all in all great model Beyonce you haven't let me down yet granted this is only my third one you have plenty of opportunities to let me down in the future but I'm definitely going to continue buying these models if I can get them at a decent price. Uh, like the other channels say, you know, coming from Australia, it's the shipping that kills you. A lot of times the models are in line with the pricing for other models. It's just that Australia is a far away land. A land full of uh, hobbits and stuff, apparently. No offense, but let's face it, uh, well, that was New Zealand, right? The Lord, Lord of the Rings. What I'm looking for now as I stall talking is my uh, solar spinner. And here it is. Okay. Uh, all right, so this photo, you can see that little mirror. Hopefully if I focus. Yeah, so it's there. So that's a, this is a great model. I, I do like it. I like the styling. I mean, it looks so 60s. It looks like a Mustang, sort of, but it's more blocky. It looks like a blocky Mustang. 
I don't even know if I like this more than the Mustang. I possibly might like the appearance of this over uh, like a 60s Mustang. I should have thought to uh, bring one out, but sorry. Um, I am going to bring out a couple of other Fords though. You know, this is a Falcon from Hot Wheels. I forget which one. XB maybe? XA? But it's a recent one. It has like yellow flames. I, I pulled them off with uh, some adhesive remover, a scotch branded adhesive remover, got the flames off. And then I uh, did my own 3D printed wheels, just to be weird. Funky wheels. Alright. Now, the overall length of this Hot Wheels is relatively close to a 164 scale. But, um, you know, mine is, Hot Wheels has a slammed chassis. You know, the original Hot Wheels had the tires sunken underneath the bodywork. As you can see, my 3D wheels had to be sunken underneath the bodywork as well. Henceforth, the roof line is super low. If it had stock tires, it would be more like that, right? Okay, well, another car, Green Light, did the good old uh, Mad Max vehicle, which is a different Falcon, but it has a special um, nose on it. I forget what that was called. A Poseidon nose, or pyramid nose it has a name to it it's not a stock falcon for sure in the front end but Greenlight did a good job there on that one for the price you can't beat it it's for the price it's yeah i mean there is a better resin model but it's so rare to find if you're really dying for it that resin model was by ace model and i've never seen it come up on ebay in like six seven months so Okay, and here's one of my first two Beantes. This is the first one I reviewed back a few weeks ago. And it's uh, the Ute, the Ford Ute. So, it doesn't have the chrome bumpers. That's why I was so uh, surprised by how good the chrome bumpers are on this, uh, this older Falcon here. Really nice. So, Beante's a great brand. They're up there. I mean, my favorite brands right now are LCV. Inno 64, Beyonce, and uh, Tarmac Works, in that order, I would say right now. I don't know, some of you guys love TLV, but I would rank them like in the bottom half of my brand listing. They're, for the money, they're not that good. They're good models until you figure out the pricing. They're, they're just such a horrible value that uh, I don't buy too many of them. But that's a different rant, so I apologize. Anyways, I think you've seen this model spin around long enough, so I guess I'll see you later. Good day, mates.